America's farmers and ranchers are the backbone of this country. They feed our families, they produce our fiber, and they protect some of our most important natural resources. Today, the new Civil Liberties Alliance is at the RCAF USA Rally for America's Ranchers Convention in Deadwood, South Dakota. We're here to speak to our cattle producers about a very important lawsuit that NCLA has filed against the United States Department of Agriculture and a sub-agency called APHIS. So is this really about health, or again, is this about control? And I think that we all know the answer to that. In April 2019, the USDA posted a two-page fact sheet to its website attempting to mandate that all livestock producers who are going to be moving their livestock interstate to use radio frequency identification ear tags. This fact sheet actually violated a 2013 regulation that had been issued by the USDA that recognized a variety of forms of identification for livestock. USDA knows that it cannot use a guidance document to nullify a properly adopted regulation. USDA knows that they violated the law when they issued the fact sheet in April 2019. RCAF USA represents about 5,800 cattle and sheep producers. Our organization actively participated in the government proceeding that resulted in the 2013 final rule. The final rule was designed to protect the rights of independent cattle producers and sheep producers by allowing them to continue using low-cost technologies in order to comply with the identification and traceability requirements. A shift like this in policy would be catastrophic to the U.S. cattle industry, and that's why we reached out to the New Civil Liberties Alliance for Health. We are Donna and Tracy Hunt, and my grandfather and great-grandfather bought the MW Ranch in 1926. In compliance with the 2013 rule, we use brands, traditional ear tags, and tattoos just like my grandfather and great-grandfather before me. We trail our cattle from Wyoming to South Dakota and back. It would involve a tremendous amount of time and expense to convert to RFID ear tags. And for the producers that are operating now under the very common sense regulations that are set out in that 2013 rule, it would just be cost prohibitive. We are Kenny and Roxy Fox. We are third generation ranchers. Our sons will be the fourth generation. Our families have been in ranching for over 100 years. As chairman of the Animal ID Committee for RCAF USA, I was part of a working group sponsored by USDA on the implementation of RFID tags. I opposed the RFID mandate from the beginning. And because of that, I was excluded from the advisory committees, not allowed to talk to one another nor USDA officials. The USDA and APHIS violated FACA, the Federal Advisory Committee Act, when they appointed advisory committees that were all pro-RFID, while they excluded people who opposed the RFID mandate. As a result of NCLA's lawsuit, USDA was forced to withdraw that fact sheet in October 2019, and we now have a judge's order saying that USDA cannot reissue that guidance. But the fact remains that these agencies violated many laws when they attempted to impose the RFID mandate in the first place. NCLA is committed to stopping these federal agencies when they attempt to circumvent the law. We must remain vigilant in monitoring the USDA, APHIS, and state and tribal agencies as they seek to move forward with RFID requirements against our livestock producers. We really owe it to our American ranchers.